Okay, uh, good evening everyone, and thank you very much in advance for listening to my WOW talk this evening. Um, that's uh, me, believe it or not, uh, way back in the day when I was younger, cuter, and a whole lot blonder, uh, a mini Mr. Felgate even, some people might say there. Um, I was born and raised in Kilburn down the road um, from our school, and I was very lucky to be born into a, uh, a wonderfully caring and uh, family that looked after me and provided everything I needed. We didn't have much money when I was young. Uh, we lived, myself, my father, my mother, my sister, in a one-bedroom flat until I was 15 years old. Um, actually had a, a, an amazing time there. I remember when I was very young, uh, we had a bunk bed. My, I took the top bunk, being the older sibling, um, and I remember jumping the three meters between the top of my bunk bed to my mum and dad's bed across the other side of the room and thrilled with that uh, throughout my childhood. But mum and dad mustn't have liked it on a Saturday morning. Uh, my parents care deeply about education and from a young age taught me um, that that would be the path for me to have a, a successful life. I listened intently to them. Um, and I, I did well at school, I worked hard at school. I was the first person in my family to attend university. Um, I attended Oxford University studying mathematics where I achieved a first class degree. And um, followed a fairly well trodden path thereafter, similar to Simon this evening. I went into a career in finance for six years, changed, became a teacher. I'll tell you a little bit about why that happened later. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had reasonable success being a teacher, and I love the job I currently do. What, if anything, makes me unique? I would say what makes me unique is a stark understanding that, in fact, there's nothing particularly unique about me at all. I'm fairly normal, average person with not much more skills than anyone else in this room. That awareness, I think, is what makes me slightly more knowledgeable about myself than various other people we may see on TV who don't necessarily understand their weaknesses. I also feel that I am well aware of what I think is society's biggest lie. Um, for me, we always hear statements such as, you know, Messi is such a naturally gifted footballer. Um, they even talk about uh, Michelangelo, the greatest painter of all time, saying he was born with a, a paintbrush in his hand which wouldn't have been too nice for Mummy Michelangelo if that was true. Um, but I would like to believe that um, the, the differences between us aren't necessarily down to natural talent. They're down to how hard you work and how hard you try at something. Early on, my parents taught me the benefit of hard work. Um, and I think that one difference about me is I'm not prepared to accept society's myth about natural talent and um, um, and I'm not prepared to accept that in my life. What's the biggest challenge of my career? I think the biggest challenge of my career was actually starting my career, um, in teaching that is. I was in a successful job in the city, uh, well paid. Uh, my friends were doing similar jobs to myself. My parents were extremely proud of me. But I used to look around the office, in particular at the, the people higher up than me in that office, and I, I used to look at their eyes and their body language, and I used to see a slight, oh, you can't see your own eyes, I suppose, but I would see a glint in their eyes and a little bit of extra um, energy in their body, body language than I had myself. Um, and I was yearning for that, um, what they had. So I remember receiving an email uh, from, from head office asking if anyone would like to do some community outreach and I took them up on that and I went into a school once a week to read with children who struggled with literacy in a school in Bethnal Green. The minute I walked in, I f that extra energy in your body language and the glint in your eye, I felt I, I'd found the place where I could achieve that. And from there on, I quit my job two months later and trained immediately to PGCE and become a maths teacher. My bosses said, are you literally mad? Uh, my mum and dad were slightly apprehensive, if I'm honest, about the career change because they were very proud of me, what I was doing to that point. Um, and my friends thought, 
it was a step backwards. It, you know the phrase they say if you uh, if you can um, if you can, those who can do and those who can't teach. Um, so they, they felt like that. I actually, um, again, trying to dispel the myths that are out there, I believe those who can um, have boundless energy, the patience of a saint, the ability to stay up late into the night and do marking and constantly be enthusiastic for children, they teach. And a lot of other people think our job is easy when it isn't. So that was the hardest thing for me. It was actually going against what my, the people around me, my network, thought I should be doing. And actually my natural mathematical brain um, and actually trusting my instinct for once and following that. My long-term ambition is to reach out to as many students as possible to teach them what I believe is society's biggest lie, um, that you are naturally good or bad at things. I do that currently through the medium of my favourite subject, maths. And I try via my website to show pupils that with hard work, anything, including a difficult subject like maths, is possible if you try hard enough. One, one thing that happened last month, so last month when I received uh, the award from David Cameron and some of our students are, uh, were with me that day in the room, so I had a realisation, I thought to myself, um, Myself and Mr. Cameron have quite a different start in life. Um, it's a fairly privileged background, myself not so much. But we both actually um, had a, quite a similar path thereafter. He went to Oxford, I went to Oxford. He got a first class degree, I got a first class degree. Yes, he's running the country and I'm a maths teacher. But there was a, you know, there's a moment a month ago where our paths realigned and he was in a room um, for my purpose um, and shared a moment with me there. So uh, again, it proved to me that the hard work that I put in in life actually got me to a place and shared a moment with someone that potentially had a, a better, better starting point than me. Um, a favorite quote of mine is from a, a book I read um, called The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. And it's about a young boy who is a shepherd and he's trying to find what his dreams are and follow his dreams. In there, the boy doesn't know what to do, but a line in that, in that book says, all you have to do is pay attention. Life's lessons always arrive when you are ready. I feel my whole life I was paying attention. I was paying attention to my parents when they taught me about education. I was paying attention when I was trying hard at university, studying maths. I was paying attention that day the email came through asking if I wanted to take part in community service. I was paying attention when I followed my natural instinct for probably the first time in my life, rather than my mathematical brain. So I suppose I'd like to leave you with this thought. Are you paying attention in your life? And are you ready for the life lessons that may be around the corner for you? Thank you very much for listening.